Okay, so it's time to get started with the uh, the power section. So that's a 7805 regulator, a couple of 10 microfarad caps, a 0.1 microfarad cap. And then over here, we have uh, some uh, filtering for the uh, for the 12 volt supply, which goes to all the, the op amps. So uh, basically where that uh, goes on the board, let me uh, get this squared away here. So the... Uh, 5 volt regulator goes here and it goes with the uh, with the heatsink facing outwards. Uh, then we have uh, the two electrolytics go here and here. And then the uh, 3.1 microfarad uh, caps that uh, filter the supply to the op amps uh, go in this section here. So here's 50, here's 49, and then here's 48 over here. Um, so that's all there is. Uh, one other thing, now there is a reverse polarity protection diode that goes up across here. I won't be installing that. I'll just uh, short circuit that out. Uh, I've built this quite a few times and uh, uh, this guy here is the, the positive lead. This is the, this is the ground lead and uh, so I won't need that. It, it does take uh, about 0.7 of a volt off the, uh, off the supply to the um, to the power amplifier so you can get a little bit more uh, output if you don't include the diode. So anyway, uh, I'll get on with that, install this, and then come back and we'll test the voltages around the circuit. Okay, so that's the, uh, the uh, power components installed. Uh, just to quickly go through those. Um, so this is the 5 volt regulator. Note the heat sink is facing outwards. Here's the uh, two uh, the two uh, 10 microfarad uh, electrolytics and note the polarity on those. Uh, here is the 0.1 microfarad cap on the uh, 5 volt rail and these three are the 3.1 microfarad caps on the 12 volt rail. So let's plug this in and get it going. Now note uh, this is the top of the board, this is the bottom of the board. The uh, positive pin is the one on the bottom there. And I standardized on these uh, barrel connectors a while ago, uh, center positive, uh, outside negative. So let's get this plugged in and uh, check some voltages. All right, so we've got it plugged in. Um, make sure we can see the, the voltage there. So let's test the uh, 12 volt uh, supply uh, first. And uh, the 12 volt uh, appears on pin eight of the op amps that are in the uh, that are in the circuit here. So that's IC five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So let's pick IC. Get my hands out of the way here so you can see it. So let's pick uh, IC seven and check that voltage there. And you can see 12.48 volts. And yeah, we can check the others, some of the others too. So there's IC uh, IC six. I won't bother checking all the others. So that's uh, 12 volts on those. Now, for 5 volts, there are two ICs that use 5 volts. There's the IC3 here, and there is the FST3253. Uh, so you know, I see this one's easiest to check. Uh, it's pin 14 is the 5 volt rail. And again, I've got to get my hands out of this, out of the picture here. So let's check pin 14. Should see 5 volts there. Oops, it's hard to get my pin exactly right. So there you can see 5.02, 5.02 volts. So that's the 12 volt supply and the 5 volt supply all done. Uh, next we'll move on to uh, the CW filter part of the circuit. Uh, that include, that uh, consists of a couple of op amps, um, some uh, capacitors and resistors, and then we'll be able to test uh, that CW filter itself. So that's to come in the next video. So I've put together the uh, CW filter part of the uh, of the circuit. Um, this uh, filter is centered around 750 hertz, and it's approximately 200 hertz uh, wide. Uh, the circuit is based on the Hypermite uh, CW filter, and I'll include a link to the Hypermite uh, down below so you can see it. So in terms of testing this, uh, I'll be injecting a signal here, and I'll be sampling the output here, and I'll be varying the uh, uh, frequency in the signal generator to uh, see how the filter performs between uh, 400, 400 to, let's say, 1,000 hertz. So just uh, panning over to the, um, to the kit itself. Uh, let's just 
can up here. So just to show you where I'm, uh, where I'm sampling. So this uh, here is where I'm injecting the signal and that's R29. And then I'm sampling the signal over here, which is the, um, it, it's actually the pot uh, R, I can't read it from here, but it, it, it's actually the, um, uh, the volume uh, pot that's, that's over here. And you can see the output on my oscilloscope. Now one of the things with this, uh, uh, when I had first started to, uh, to, to test this, I couldn't for the life of me get uh, the, the, the filter working. Um, I even got to the point where I replaced both the op amps uh, because I couldn't uh, figure out why it wasn't working. And the reason is because uh, this point here requires a 2.5 volt DC bias on the signal. Now that 2.5 volt DC bias is basically injected in all the way back here in the actual radio. So you can see here that there is a resistor 10K, 10K resistor divider. Here's a 5 volt signal. So this points at 2.5 volts and that bias flows all the way through the receiver chain uh, including the CW filter. So as, as soon as I included that bias, uh, it started working correctly. Now if you have a look at the signal generator here, you can see there's my offset there. So that basically has a 0.3 volt signal swinging around 2.5 volt, uh, yeah, 2.5 volt DC. So let's just move over to the uh, oscilloscope and you know, let's just see the performance of this, uh, of this filter. So I've currently got it around about 770 Hertz. Uh, and you can see it's an approximately uh, 5.6 volts peak to peak signal. And you can see as I, let me reduce the, uh, Actually, let me get the uh, signal generator in there so that you can see that too. So as I reduce the, um, uh, the frequency, you can see that the uh, filter itself is rapidly uh, falling off. So now I'm down at 540 hertz, and you can see uh, I've gone from that original 5.4 volt peak to peak to 1.64 volts. Uh, there's also some distortion in there. I'm not quite sure what that's about, maybe because I'm testing out, out of the circuit. But let's go up again. So you can see the signal increasing all the way up to that peak that we are at before of around about 7, 7, 770 hertz. And then as I increase further, the frequency further, you can see a rapid uh, 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 tail off of the, uh, of the signal there. So I'm up at 890 hertz now and I've gone down from that five volt peak to peak signal to around about 2.5 volts. So as I, and as I increase further, now I'm up uh, at 970 Hertz, you can see the signals diminished to a, uh, to a, a less than one volt peak to peak. So that confirms that the uh, CW filter, part of the, uh, um, part of the um, kit is uh, working as intended. Um, so I've got two choices uh, to, to, to go forward here. I can either go uh, further ahead in the um, audio chain and put in the, uh, the, uh, the audio amplifier. Um, one of the challenges though is this uh, signal generator, um, I, I can't generate uh, an offset of 2.5 volts for any signal less than 0.3 volts. So it, it will be hard to test that. What I might do is construct an external, little five volt external uh, circuit so that I can actually actually test that. So uh, that'll probably be in the next video and um, uh, this is a wrap for now. So just a quick update. Uh, I thought what I'd do is I'd put together the uh, um, 2.5 volt bias uh, circuit here. So it consists of a five volt regulator and then a uh, cap here and uh, you know, the 10K pair of uh, resistors in, in a divider fashion. Um, so I'm injecting the signal right here, goes through a decoupling cap, and then I'm sampling the signal at the uh, uh, intersection point of the two 10K resistors. It's going into the same point R29 on the, on the uh, radio, and then just panning up. So you can see uh, I'm injecting uh, currently a 0 0.005 volt signal uh, at 700 hertz and I'm getting this uh, 97 millivolt uh, uh, signal on the output here. So as I uh, 
Again, as I decrease the frequency, you can see a rapid tail off and that uh, distortion's gone as well. So there must've been something that the offset on the signal generator was uh, introducing in there. So there's 700 Hertz, 800 Hertz and so on. So just thought I'd do a quick update. Uh, what I'll do next uh, is because I got the five, five volt bias uh, circuit together, what I'm gonna do next is uh, uh, basically build out this part. So that includes, there's a volume pot here, there's another op amp, and this final op amp uh, uh, you know, increases the, uh, the voltage gain by 120 over 1K, about 120. Uh, I think it's, uh, I won't even guess what that is in dB. So I'll, I'll uh, put it together and then we'll, we'll see that in action. Okay, so uh, I've got the uh, audio amplifier and, and buffer installed. Um, just a few notes on the circuit. There's actually a uh, half rail voltage divider set up here um, for, this, for this part of the circuit. Um, and uh, let's just pan over to the, uh, the actual radio so we can see where it is. Move this down. Okay, so that audio amplifier consists of this op amp here and there's some associated caps and resistors uh, with that. I also chose to install the, um, uh, the earphone connector and I've just tacked in the, uh, the volume pot just for the moment. Uh, the reason I do that is there, there is a FET that goes here, VS170, that's involved in um, uh, the transmit receive circuitry, so it basically uh, grounds the um, the uh, receive path uh, when when transmitting, um, and and I don't don't want to install this. The way you install this pot is you bend the legs up and then you install it from under the board, and and it covers the underside of this fet. And I didn't want to install it just yet. So anyway, I've just tacked that in temporarily. Um, so same setup as before. I'm injecting that. Uh, um, uh, 700 Hertz signal into here with a 2.5 volt bias. Um, so the good thing now is we can actually hear this in action. So let, let me just turn the volume up. So there's the receiver receiving. That um, receiver's not receiving. I'm, I'm just sending the 700 Hertz signal into the, uh, into the um, audio portion. Um, and you can hear it. So, and as we uh, change the, f the frequency, let me go down to 600, you should, you should notice a decrease in volume as that filter swings into action. See, I'm at 200 Hertz now and the uh, signals are the, uh, signals basically undetectable. So let's go back to 700. And now going up. That's at 1.3 uh, kilohertz. And uh, again, the signal, let me turn the volume up on the speaker. You can barely hear it. Turning back down again. So there we go. That's um, basically um, the uh, filter and the final audio amplifier circuitry in place and good to go. Um, what I'm gonna do now is move back in the circuit. Let me just show you on the screen, on the schematic rather. I'm gonna move back to uh, installing this phase shift network. So this is a critical part of uh, any IQ style radio and it basically, what it does is it takes the Q signal down here and shifts it back a further 90 degrees. And the purpose, the reason for that is to remove the unwanted sideband. So this is a 20 meter radio, so the unwanted sideband in this case would be the lower sideband. And uh, if you'll notice on here, so that consists of four op amps. And then there's some pots in here which control, there's three pots, one that controls the balance between the I and the Q. And these other two pots actually control the phase between the, uh, the I and the Q. So what you need is these, these two signals to be exactly uh, to, the, the phase shift needs to be exactly 90 degrees and you know these pots are used to use to achieve that. The radio actually comes with some inbuilt software to to check this after the build so you know that's a, a, a fantastic part of this little radio is it not only come is not only a good radio but it comes with its own inbuilt uh, inbuilt testing function so 
this portion will be next. Um, we'll wrap this video for the moment and uh, come back in the next video and build out the phase shift network and then we'll do some more testing. That's all for now.